Welcome to the lecture. Now, in this uh, lecture, we are first going to talk about uh, standardized regression coefficients. You see, uh, when we are trying to fit a multiple linear regression model, then it is based on different types of independent variables like x1, x2, xk. And uh, these uh, variables are measured in different units. For example, x1 can be in kilogram, x2 can be in liter, x3 can be in uh, some other unit. So, uh, when we are trying to compute the regression coefficients, they are trying to denote the rate of change in the value of y, that is the output, when there is a unit change in the corresponding uh, value of independent variable. Once these variables are measured in different units, sometimes it becomes difficult to compare the uh, regression coefficients, right. So, in such a situation, it is difficult to compare the regression coefficients, right. If I try to take us an example, suppose the fitted model is y is equal to phi plus say x1 plus say 1000 times say x2, right. And uh, suppose this x1 is a variable which is uh, measured in, measured in say here liter and x2 is a variable which is measured in, in milliliter. So, now if you try to see partial derivative of y with respect to x1, it is equal to here 1 and that is essentially your beta 1 hat and partial derivative of y with respect to x2 is here 1000 which is essentially the value of beta hat 2, right. Okay. So, if you try to see here, uh, the value of uh, beta 1 hat this is denoting the change in the value of y of y when x1 changes by 1 liter and this is indicating the change in the value of y when x2 changes by 1000 milliliter. Now, if you try to observe the value of beta 1 hat, which is here equal to 1, this is much, much smaller than the value of beta 2 hat, which is equal to here 1000. But if you try to see, both of them are denoting the same change. Right, this is in liter and whereas this is in milliliter and 1 liter is equal to 1000 milliliter. So, if you try to see the values of beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat are indicating that x1 and x2 have got uh, different effects, but effects of, of x1 and x2 are the same. So, now in such cases, uh, uh, we have a problem that how to compare the different regression coefficient and in such situation, one option is that we can uh, work with dimensionless regression coefficients. And the use of dimensionless regression coefficient will avoid such problems. Right. Now, the next question is uh, how to obtain the dimensionless regression coefficient and these uh, dimensionless uh, regression coefficients, they are actually called as standardized 
regression coefficients. So, in order to obtain uh, such standardized regression coefficients, uh, we have two approaches. One is unit normal scaling procedure and another is unit length scaling procedure. In both the procedures, we try to change the values of uh, study and explanatory variables. So, we try to discuss them one by one. So, first of all, I uh, try to discuss the unit normal scaling procedure. Okay. In this case, we try to define the values of explanatory variables, say we can denote by say x i j star as say the original observation x i j minus uh, the sample mean of the observation on the corresponding explanatory variable divided by s j, where this s j square is given by 1 over n minus 1, summation i goes from 1 to n x i j minus x bar j whole square. So, uh, we are trying to take a particular explanatory uh, variable, we try to collect the observation on them, we try to find out their mean and their uh, uh, sample variance and we try to subtract every observation x i j by its corresponding mean and divided by the corresponding standard uh, uh, deviation. Okay. And similarly, we try to transform y as Say, say here y i star and in this case also we try to subtract the original observations y i by their sample means y bar and divided by their standard deviation where s y square is 1 over n minus 1 summation i goes from 1 to n y i minus y bar whole square. And in this case if you recall we had i goes from 1 to here n and j goes from here 1 to here k because we have uh, k explanatory variables. right? So, now uh, when we try to scale uh, the explanatory and steady variables then what happens that this scaled explanatory and steady variables have mean 0 and variance unity that is 1. right? And uh, when we are doing such a scaling then interceptor term is lost, term lost in such a scaling. Right. Now, I can transform my original model which was based on y and x1, x2, xk in terms of uh, the scaled uh, variables uh, y star and say x star and so our model becomes say y i star is equal to beta 1 star x i 1 star plus beta 2 star x i 2 star up to here say beta k star x i k star plus epsilon i i goes from 1 to n. All right, and based on that we can obtain the least square estimator estimator or even equivalently the maximum likely estimator also under the assumption that epsilons are following a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance uh, sigma square and they are iid beta hat is denoted by say beta hat star and this becomes here x star transpose x star whole inverse x star transpose y star right and uh, where this x star is the matrix which is obtained by the uh, scaled observations on x1, x2, xk and y star is a vector of uh, observations on the steady variable which are obtained after the scaling. Right. In this case if you try to see we are trying to standardize the observation 
uh, like in the same way as we do in the case of uh, normalizing the random variable that is the random variable minus its mean divided by the standard deviation or its standard error. So, that is why this procedure is called as uh, unit normal scaling procedure. Okay. So, now we discuss the next procedure which is unit length scaling. In this case, we uh, define two quantities say S j j which is equal to here i goes from 1 to n x i j minus x bar j whole square and say S t which is equal to i goes from 1 to here n y i minus y bar whole square. So, if you uh, observe these quantities are similar to the earlier procedure of unit uh, normal scaling, but S j j and S t they are um, based on a quantity similar to in the uh, analysis of variance that we are going to discuss later on. And uh, based on that S j j and S t we try to now scale our explanatory variables and study variable as x i j say let me now denote it by here say naught. So, this will be the original observations x i j on the j th explanatory variable minus the sample mean of the j th explanatory variable and square root of s j j. And similarly, we try to scale the observation on steady variable as a original observation y i minus its mean divided by square root of s t. Right. In such a case uh, what happened that the new explanatory variable say, where, say x j naught has mean 0 and length which is obtained by square root of i goes from 1 to n x i j naught minus x bar j naught whole square this is equal to here 1. So, that is why this procedure is called as unit length scaling. Okay. And in this case now the model can be rewritten in terms of scaled variables as y i naught is equal to beta 1 naught x i 1 naught plus beta 2 naught x i 2 naught plus beta k naught x i k naught plus epsilon i i goes from 1 to n and then in case uh, we try to find out the estimator of beta as a beta hat which can be either least squared estimator or the maximum likelihood estimator assuming the normal quick distribution for epsilon i's uh, this turns out to be x naught transpose x naught whole inverse x naught transpose y naught. Okay. So, where x naught is the matrix of observations on k explanatory variables after they are standardized. And similarly, y naught is the vector of observations on a steady variable after they have been uh, say scaled. Okay. Next, we uh, come on the aspect of now test of hypothesis. So, uh, we are going to first discuss here test of hypothesis which is called as analysis of variance. Right. And uh, this is a test uh, which is uh, used to check the overall adequacy of the model. Next question is what do we really understand by uh, the overall adequacy? You see a uh, model is uh, obtained by estimating the model parameters beta 1, beta 2, beta k. And uh, we want to ch uh, check here whether all the variables are significant or not. Right. So, we consider here a model say beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 up to here beta k x k plus epsilon. 
and uh, here we assume that uh, the uh, that all the observations on uh, explanatory variable x1 they takes the value 1 so that beta 1 here is the intercept term and all beta 2 beta 3 beta k they are the slope uh, parameter we are intentionally considering the presence of intercept term in this model because uh, that we are going to relate with the coefficient of determination that we are going to uh, discuss later on right so this test of hypothesis is about testing whether all beta 2 beta 3 up to beta k they are zero or not so so obviously if you try to see here if all beta 2 beta 3 beta k they become 0 that means my model becomes only here y is equal to beta 1 plus epsilon so this is a uh, testing the significance of all the slope parameters uh, together right and uh, this hypothesis uh, determines if there is a linear relationship between y and all x2, x3, see here xk. Now, there are two options whether this h0 is accepted or h0 is rejected. Well, obviously, if H0 is accepted, that means all regression coefficient have got uh, value 0. So, all the corresponding explanatory variable x2, x3, xk, they are not contributing in explaining the variation in y. But the rejection of H0 implies that at least one of the explanatory variable among x2, x3, xk contributes significantly in the model, right. And in this case, our alternative hypothesis is uh, that at least one beta j is different from 0, where j goes from 2, 3 up to k. And the test procedure to test uh, such a hypothesis, this is called as analysis of variance. So, let us now try to uh, briefly uh, discuss that how this uh, test of analysis of variance is obtained. Right, and this uh, analysis of uh, variance shortly called as ANOVA variance. This ANOVA technique is actually based on partitioning the total variation. In this case, we try to partition the total deviation which is actually here y i minus y bar right and we try to divide it into two components for example i can write y i minus y bar is equal to y i minus y i hat plus y i hat minus y bar so if you observe here this quantity that is giving us total deviation and this is a deviation around the fitted line and this is a deviation of fitted line around mean that is y bar. So, now what we do? We try to square on both the sides and we sum them up from i goes from 1 to n. So, 
when i square it this becomes y i minus y bar whole square and when I try to sum it this becomes i goes from 1 to n and when I try to uh, square on the right hand side I get the squared quantities of both these factors plus their cross product term. The cross product terms, uh, term becomes 0. So, we get here summation i goes from 1 to n y i hat minus y bar whole square plus summation i goes from 1 to n y i minus y hat whole square right. Now, this quantity is called as total sum of squares and this quantity is called as regression sum of squares and this quantity is called as sum of squares due to residuals and uh, this is connoted as say SST and this is denoted as SS reg and this is denoted as SS res that is our earlier notation also. And uh, one important uh, uh, thing we have to note it down here that when we try to partition the, the total sum of squares SST into two components S sum of squares due to regression and sum of square due to residual then both these terms are orthogonal to each other. Okay, so this uh, this analysis of variance techniques is based on the partitioning the total variation into two different orthogonal components, sum of square due to regression and sum of square due to re residuals. Okay, now based on that, uh, we can uh, write down the expression more compactly before we go for the further analysis. Your SST here is nothing but i goes from one to n y i minus y bar whole square this can be written as i goes from 1 to n y i square minus n times y bar square and this can be further written as a y transpose y minus n into 1 over n square uh, y transpose l into l transpose y uh, where l is a column vector of all elements 1. And this can be further written as say here say y transpose i minus 1 over n l l prime times here y right. So, you can see that this quantity quite uh, resembles with the matrix like i minus x x transpose x whole inverse x transpose right ok. Similarly, sum of square due to residual is nothing but i goes from 1 to n epsilon i hat whole square and uh, this is I can write down as say uh, epsilon hat transpose epsilon hat and which can be written as y minus x beta hat transpose y minus x beta hat and uh, when I try to open it this becomes y transpose y minus beta hat transpose x transpose y and this we had also written earlier as a y transpose h bar y and the sum of square due to regression this is nothing but your i goes from 1 to n y i hat minus y bar whole square. And we note down that uh, we also have established that total sum of square is equal to uh, sum of square due to residual and sum of square due to regression right. So, I can write down sum of square due to regression as say SST minus SS res. And if I try to substitute all these values, we get here beta hat transpose x transpose y minus n times y bar square. So, uh, these are the three components uh, which are obtained by partitioning the total sum of squares into two orthogonal components, sum of square due to regression and sum of square due to residuals. And well, I am uh, trying to briefly describe what are we going to do. 
This quantity sum of square due to regression divided by sigma a square, this follows a chi square distribution with k minus 1 degrees of freedom under H naught and SS residual divided by sigma a square, this follows a chi square with n minus k degrees of freedom under H naught and this concept we had discussed earlier also and both of them they are independent. Right. Now, I have two random variables which are uh, uh, chi square distributed with certain degrees of freedom, both are independent. So, I can use here uh, the F statistics and we define here a statistics F naught say SS reg divided by its degrees of freedom upon SS res divided by its degrees of freedom and we try to uh, call it say here mean square due to regression divided by mean square due to residual where your ms reg is the mean square due to regression this is actually uh, means any mean square is is divided by sum of its squares due to regression in this case divided by the degrees of freedom and similarly uh, msrs this is also divided by ssrs divided by degrees of freedom and minus k and this will follow a f distribution with k minus 1 and say n minus k degrees of freedom under h naught so now in uh, simple words if i want to test a hypothesis h naught beta 2 equal to beta 3 equal to b beta k, we simply have to compute sum of a square due to regression, sum of a square due to residual and then we have to obtain the statistics f naught. Once I have obtained the statistics f naught, this follows a f distribution with the degrees of freedom k minus 1 and n minus k under h naught. So, now I can write down my decision which is reject h naught if f naught is greater than f alpha with degrees of freedom k minus 1 and say n minus k right where these values are obtained from the tables of f distribution right now this entire procedure is expressed in the form of uh, ANOVA table, which is actually analysis of variance table, right. And uh, this analysis of variance table is constructed like follows and the advantage of understanding this ANOVA table is that uh, when we are uh, using the software, the outcome is given in terms of analysis of variance table. So, it is important for us to understand that how the different ingredients of that ANOVA table have been computed and what are their interpretation. So, this ANOVA table will have the first component as say here, what is the source of variation. The second component will be what is the value of corresponding sum of squares. Then it will also mention the degree of freedoms and then it will mention the mean square and then at the end it will uh, give the value of f naught. Right. So, in uh, this case uh, we have the first source of variation which is regression due to regression. Right, we are trying to fit a model. So, the entire variability of the model is uh, partitioned into two components. One we are trying to capture through the fitted model and that is controlled by sum of square due to regression and the part we, which is beyond our control that, that is due to random variation that is being controlled by the sum of square due to error or sum of square due to residual. Okay, so the first component of variation is regression, second component is residuals and after that the third component is their total. Right. So, sum of square due to regression we have obtained and we have denoted by SS reg. Sum of square due to residual 
this is obtained and we have denoted by SS res and total sum of squares is obtained and denoted as SST. The corresponding degrees of freedom are k minus 1, n minus k and their sum this is n mi uh, minus k plus k minus 1 which is equal to here n minus 1. And based on that we have obtained the mean square due to regression and mean square due to residual which are obtained as SS rec divided by degrees of freedom which is k minus 1 and this is sum of square due to residual divided by the degrees of freedom n minus k and then the value of f naught is obtained here by ms reg divided by ms res. So, this is about the uh, the analysis of variance table that is obtained in uh, case of the software usage. So, uh, now we stop here with this ANOVA table and in the next lecture we will try to consider the test of hypothesis on the individual regression coefficients, their confidence interval and some other aspect. Till then, goodbye.